Hi, dear friends. Welcome back to High Point again. So, I'm here with yet another drama by William Shakespeare. So, in this video, like you can see, we are going to discuss and learn about Julius Caesar. So, Julius Caesar, I know more, most of you know that it's a Roman play, Roman play by uh, Shakespeare. So, Roman play means what you know. Uh, the play will be the background of the play will be uh, what. Rome and Roman characters will be there. Historical Roman characters will be there. So some historical events will be going on. So Julius Caesar, Anthony and Cleopatra, Coriolanus. So these are other uh, uh, Roman plays by William Shakespeare. So this is also a tragedy. Julius Caesar is also a tragedy. So we can see some of the major ingredients of Elizabethan tragedy in here. So ghost is one of the uh, you know, one of the major ingredient of Elizabethan tragedies, especially Shakespearean tragedies. And also we can see that uh, uh, anticlimax also happening uh, in there with Julius Caesar's death or murder. So that is the anticlimax of this uh, particular play. So we will learn many more details and also a detailed summary of Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar's story is very small only. There is no much... Uh, you know, complications are going on like we could see many other uh, plays of uh, Shakespeare. But still, Julius Caesar is important uh, as a drama, as a Roman play and also as a tragedy by uh, William Shakespeare. So, like I used to say, you can obviously go and visit my website if you want more details related to Shakespeare. See, I have given plenty of materials related to Shakespeare when you go and see the Elizabethan age that is there under the history of English literature. You can see that I have given at least five audio lectures for Shakespeare, so in which you have immense number of materials that are needed for your UGC net JRF English journey to fulfill. So go and visit, or you can join a WhatsApp group. I have given the uh, I have given the link in the description box. You can go and uh, click the link and join the WhatsApp group, which will be. Uh, in which you will get daily quizzes and materials and news and updates related to uh, NTA UGC net English language and literature okay let's go to the introduction to the play so the full title of the play is the tragedy of Julius Caesar like I said Julius Caesar is a tragedy every other Roman play by Shakespeare is a tragedy remember that see Antony and Cleopatra is a tragedy as well and also Coriolanus is also a tragedy and if we can categorize this play as historical play, Roman play, tragedy by Shakespeare. And it was first performed in the year 1599, okay? So, Julius Caesar at a play, a first staged or performed in the year 1599. And even though Caesar is the main character, Brutus speaks more than the title character. And the main psychological drama of the play focuses on Brutus. So, even the title character is Julius Caesar. But Julius Caesar has very little space in the play because in the more or less, uh, you know, without any delay, we can see that Julius Caesar got murdered. And the major uh, dialogues were given and major portion was given to Brutus and the major psychological drama, mental uh, drama is going on or reactions are going on between Mark Antony and Brutus and Brutus's uh, psychological drama uh, is focused here more even the title character is Julius Caesar and it is set in Rome that's why it is a Roman play and Roman characters historical characters are uh, given space here and the main source of the play is Thomas North's translation of Plutarch's lives so remember that so what is the source of this play Julius Caesar the source of the play is Thomas North's translation of Plutarch's lives so Plutarch is another writer he has published he has written a work known as lives and thomas north translated lives into english and this uh, particular work uh, stands as the major source for the work julius caesar the play julius caesar remember okay so now we are going to learn about the characters of the play before that let me tell you if you want any help regarding about what to study how to learn and the major strategies and uh, what are things you have to learn and how you should learn to achieve ugc net and jrf you can obviously um, you can obviously ask me by messaging me or calling me or whatsapp me the number given in the screen so you know i can i'll be very glad to help you and now let's see who are the characters who are the characters of the play so there are you can see many numbers 
of characters but don't have to remember all of them you have to uh, at least remember some of them that i'll tell so these people you have to remember okay these people you have to remember so the first session uh, the first column the the characters that are there in the first column you have to remember first one is julius caesar octavius caesar mark antony lepidus okay remember them then there are another group of people they are conspirators against caesar they are marcus brutus caesius cascus decius uh, brutus cinna then metellus cibber then tribunes are there flavius and marullus they are tribunes then roman senators uh, senate senators are there cicero popilius cicero publius popilius lena are there then citizens citizens and they hold no they are not senators or tribune members or conspirators against julius caesar but they are citizens like calpurnia calpurnia is caesar's wife's name and portia portia is brutus's wife's name and soothsayer is there so who comes to julius caesar and warns him the particular day on which he is going to murdered and cinna uh, cinna is a poet then uh, there are some people who are loyal to brutus and caesius volminus Tit titinius young cato portius brother so young cato is uh, sided with brutus and all then masella as a messenger then uh, lus Lucilius, Lucilius, then others, servants, soldiers, senators, and admirers are there. So these are the major characters. At least learn these characters, okay? So uh, without learning them, without knowing them, you cannot uh, memorize this story, okay? Now let's see the plot of the play. The play opens with the celebration of the victory of Julius Caesar against the sons of the military rival Pompey. So as the play opens, we can see a celebration mood. So the opening of the play is known as exposition. Okay, the 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 particular word that we use in order to refer the opening or start of the play is exposition. So as the play opens, we can see that people are celebrating Julius Caesar's victory over the sons of military rival Pompey. So Rome's military rival was Pompey, and Julius Caesar got a victory over them. and the tribunes discover that citizens are celebrating caesar's return from the battlefield so the, these tribune people the these tribune people and of course brutus cassius casca cinna all are there so they they knew that see citizens the common people they are celebrating caesar's return from the battlefield see if you know the history of rome you can understand that rome had no king they had tri trios and they have tribunes to rule over rome and there were no kings and sovereign power were not there so it was not that, that there was not the politics or governance that were that was happening in rome so basically why these tribunes got disturbed by seeing the celebration of the citizens for julius caesar's victory because they believed that the citizens will uh, they will you know they will consider a king for rome and you know the sovereign power will come to one person and that is not good for rome so that's why even brutus he is not a uh, villainous character he is not an enemy to uh, brutus he is not sorry enemy to julius caesar but he is not he is not at all jealous of him but he is simply afraid of the sovereignty of rome that will one day it will go to julius caesar's two hands that brutus does not want so that's why he sided with uh, cassius and other conspirators but cassius and all they were uh, literally they were jealous of julius caesar acceptability given by the citizens of rome and they wanted to you know they wanted to destroy julius caesar so their motives to brutus and cassius uh, motives are different okay so they insulted the people so as the tribunes they discovered the citizens celebration they insulted the people for shifting their loyalty from pompey to caesar and break up the commoners so they actually warned against them so what they are, what is special in it so one day you were with pompey another day you are with caesar so what is happening so they actually uh, warned these uh, you know they actually insulted the loyalty of the people and caesar was warned by a soothsayer so he was actually traveling back to his home and he saw all the celebrations and he was also mesmerized by seeing this and he was also superbly happy and he was uh, you know as he was going through 
on his way back he was warned by a soothsayer basically an old man old soothsayer comes to him and he was feasting his victory and a soothsayer arrives there and he literally comes to caesar and said that beware of ides of march so 16th of march so he says you have to be very careful about this particular date of march and you know somebody comes and says that you have to you know you have to be very conscious and uh, you know warned against this particular date of march so what nonsense is this he ignores it even though he was a believer of super superstitions and all but he ignored it and meanwhile cassius plans to kill caesar so cassius was superbly and very much in jealous with uh, caesar's uh, you know achievements and victory so cassius plans to conspire to kill caesar for that you know after you know julius caesar is a powerful man he has you know his uh, citizens support and all everybody loves caesar in rome so cassius cannot with his conspirators cannot go straightly to julius caesar and kill him and uh, you know he can escape from it without any consequences so cassius wanted a support system so that he could Uh, be there and he could stand there after killing julius caesar after destroying and killing julius caesar that's why he wanted brutus brutus is uh, you know as a very worthy person worthy gentleman and as a uh, as a person to brutus's words people believe in him people give uh, you know people give credibility to brutus's words just as julius caesar so you know if brutus supports killing julius caesar then people believe it is very easy for them to make the people believe that you know there is some reason behind it some logical reason is there behind killing julius caesar so that's why cassius and other conspirators they wanted brutus in their side okay and cassius also tried to persuade brutus to join them so brutus is a worthy man a gentle man and he simply won't agree to murder someone like julius caesar right he is a good natured man and brutus is not at all an enemy to julius caesar so there is no need that he kills julius caesar first of all so cassius has to persuade him to join the conspiracy but brutus hesitated to kill him because brutus was a very good friend to julius caesar so brutus hesitated he was not ready to kill him even though maybe he is abusing his power so cassius was persuading him that you see julius caesar he will soon assume the uh, kingship of rome which uh, you know which actually destroys the sovereignty of rome rome the governors will change every other power will come to one man so that is not should not happening see by seeing the celebrations made by citizens in victory of julius caesar he was also you know you know he was also doubting brutus was also doubting that you know maybe he will abuse his power but for that only he was reluctant he was hesitating to kill uh, julius caesar okay then they hear from casca that mark antony has offered uh, caesar the crown of rome three times so as cassius was then and there he was persuading brutus to join them in the conspiracy against julius caesar casca from casca casca is one among the conspirators okay so uh, they uh, the conspirators heard including brutus heard that you know mark antony publicly offered caesar the crown of rome three times but caesar refused it okay caesar showed his broad mindedness and caesar refused it hoping that the crowd watching would insist that he accept the crown so you know casca explains this situation to everyone in such a way that brutus also believe that you know soon or later sooner or later caesar is going to assume the crown of rome okay so even though mark antony offered caesar uh, caesar the crown of uh, rome three times but he refused publicly but why he refused it he refused that the crowd watching this refusal uh, made by um, refusal of the offer made by mark antony that crowd will insist nag him or you know tell him that he should accept the crown but the, the the crowd didn't do that and he was sad about that so casca was explaining it in that when caesar was obviously like that too but still as he got murdered things got reversed 
and the evening of ides of march the conspirator forced his letter from the citizen uh, sitting caesar's intention to become a tyrant so even though brutus also knew that somehow caesar there is a chance that caesar will assume the crown but caesar anyway he refused it so we need not kill him for that so brutus was like that even though he was uh, sure of it but he hesitated to kill uh, julius caesar because caesar was his one of uh, best friends but uh, he uh, the conspirators they tricked brutus to join them how they tricked they actually forged they made letters they actually wrote letters assuming that letters are from citizens unknown citizens and these letters got delivered uh, at the house of uh, at the house of brutus and brutus happened to see these letters and what are the content of that letters because these letters all of them said that uh, you know caesar is going to be the tyrant of our rome and assume he is going to you know he is going to be the king of rome and that should not happen so the people's concerns were there in this matter that brutus find uh, in this forged letters so actually these letters were created by cassius and other party and his party okay so these letters were delivered to brutus's house anonymously and he reads them and he joins them as they expected so with this final trick brutus also joined them and they that gave them immense strength because that will justify their actions in the in a way they can actually handle the people's emotion in such a way because brutus is also there in their party and meanwhile so like uh, this all these things were happening on the previous night of this uh, particular day caesar's life calpurnia saw a horrible dream and she prevented caesar to go out so calpurnia is caesar's wife and caesar's wife saw a very you know a horrible kind of uh, dream a nightmare he she saw in the previous night and it goes like this she saw that caesar's dead body is actually floating in blood and all in the streets of uh, rome so that was the horrible dream that he that she saw and she because of that she prevented caesar to go out and he also neglected the soothsayer and his wife caesar goes out to the senate in that fatal day and the conspirators they were waiting for caesar and conspirators approaches him and cascus suddenly stabs him followed by others and brutus stabs him last yes cascus is the one who stabbed him first and brutus stabbed him last and we all know that you to brutus that is the uh, famous line here uh, told by caesar you know, for the last time to brutus as brutus stabbed him uh, okay so conspirators one by one everyone stabbed julius caesar and there we have an anti climax and what follows next is very curious now and caesar falls dying so by having all these stabs he dies the conspirators make clear that they killed him in order to prevent rome from autocracy so that's why they need brutus there so when brutus talks to people brutus is a worthy man a reliable man he has people's credibility and acceptability so it's very better that uh, brutus speaks about the intention of killing uh, julius caesar so after the murder itself conspirators they made clear that they killed julius caesar not of out of jealousy not out of any personal grudge towards him but in order to save rome from autocracy in order to save rome from uh, a tyranny okay after the murder the conspirators remained there and defended their side before the people so it's not like uh, after the murder just like any other killers they Uh, run away and they uh, they hide uh, any in any other holes and all but it was like they were there because they were sure that people will accept and they could defend their side before the people so the conspirator remained there after the murder before the dead body of julius caesar and they defended their act before the people the people obviously they lost uh, julius caesar was so dear to them so why they need an answer and mark antony also there and mark antony knew that if he protects anything there he will you know he would survive 
so he acted very wisely and he asked to speak before the people okay mark antony he was very good friend of julius caesar and mark antony he came to brutus and he came to other conspirators and asked he asked to talk before the people but brutus allowed him uh, in that occasion but he was allowed to speak only after brutus so it was like brutus gave him a permission so if he did not give him a permission that will arise per, uh, suspicion right he also knew that uh, you know mark antony is very good with uh, julius caesar and uh, it was like they were like brothers and all so mark antony when he asked to speak before the people uh, and when julius caesar dead body was there if he does not allow it that will arise suspicion so brutus allows it because his intentions are pure okay brutus's intentions are pure so brutus allows him to speak but on one condition that only after the speech by brutus mark antony could speak okay so brutus started his speak uh, his speech before the people and brutus was speaking the crowd was with him so brutus was such an orator uh, such a good orator and brutus was also good at heart his intentions were pure so brutus he could take the people and defend their cause before the people and while he was speaking the crowd was with him however soon after brutus who is going to speak it was mark antony and mark antony make an eloquent speech over caesar's corpse starting with the famous friends romans countrymen lend me your ears so this line is very famous and we know that it was mark antony who started his speech along with you know uh, a speech over uh, caesar's corpse caesar's dead body is already there and mark antony he started his eloquent speech with these two lines so with with this line with this address friends romans countrymen lend me your ears so mark antony he made a very clever speech it was not plainly directly that he accused any of the conspirators or brutus and all but he ironically in a suggestive manner he made the uh, he made the speech so for example he never accused brutus or any of the conspirators directly but he in between he says see brutus is a worthy man but he killed caesar that means see caesar is also worthy man so how this is you know this is good that brutus killed this worthy man and caesar made made many things brutus also made many great things he did many uh, great things and also in that way in a suggestive manner indirectly he actually turned all these common people citizens who were listening to mark antony against these conspirators so that was uh, that powerful was his speech okay so mark antony he also show that you know uh, what all things that uh, julius caesar has made in in his will okay in his will he has you know he has given plenty of wealth to public sectors or public people and also he also uh, has given you know the places that were that was owned uh, by julius caesar once into public gardens and all so it was like he has given many things to public okay to for public use and all so by seeing this everybody turned against uh, brutus and other conspirators and what happens next and mark antony turned the crowd against the conspirators with his speech and he shows caesar's body to them and also read caesar's will to the crowd like i said so they uh, showed they just they, they just removed the cloth that was covering caesar's body and he show them how they stabbed julius caesar and how brutally he got murdered and also he also read caesar's will before the crowd and they saw that uh, julius caesar has given many of his property and wealth to public so that actually raised the mob against the conspirators and a riot started riot means uprising started and brutus and caesar prepared for the civil war against mark antony and caesar's adopted son octavius who have formed a triumvirate in rome with the lepidus so what happens immediately a riot happened people all of a sudden turned that's a mob psychology you know if one throws a stone to at someone everybody follows him so in that way 
the people also raised against the conspirators at once by hearing the speech by Mark Antony and uh, Brutus and Cassius. They uh, escaped, but you know, escaped from the scene and they prepared for the civil war uh, against Mark Antony. So Brutus and Cassius is on one side and Mark Antony on the other side. And uh, Caesar's adopted son is Octavius Caesar, and Octavius Caesar he formed the triumvirate in Rome with the Lepidus. And meanwhile, Brutus. Is wife committed suicide so he she cannot stay there in that country because everybody is against brutus and she doesn't want to get raped so brutus wife committed suicide and caesar's ghost appears before brutus with a warning with a, uh, a warning of defeat so this is a portrayal of that see caesar's ghost so ghost appearance of ghost is one of the uh, major ingredient of Elizabethan drama, Elizabethan tragedy especially and also Shakespearean tragedy as well. So Caesar's ghost appeared as Brutus was in the tent. Uh, he, she was, he, you know, he was preparing for the battle for the civil war against Mark Antony and Caesar's ghost appeared before him and the ghost actually gave him a warning that he is going to get defeated. But we can see that in the initial part of the riot, in the initial part of the war, it was uh, favoring Brutus and uh, Cassius because they were winning in the initial part. But later, everything turned against them. Uh, and towards the end of the battle, they knew that Brutus and Cassius both knew that they will die in this war and looked each other and uh, they uh, they held their hands each other and they smiled. Just mom, it is not miles, it is smiles. So they smiled with each other and initially Brutus wins the war. However, Cassius was killed. So like I said, they knew that both of them are going to die in this war. And Brutus even, you know, he, she, he doesn't want to leave too because he lost his wife and child. And, you know, it was nothing. Uh, he was not for anything to win. So Brutus actually, even though initially he won, he was winning the war. But... Cassius eventually he got killed. In the next day he loses and commits suicide by running on his own sword held for him by a loyal soldier. You know what happens when Brutus was so clear that after the death of Cassius that she, he is going to get murdered in this battle, in this war. So next day what happens? He loses. He loses the war and he commits suicide. He doesn't want to uh, trap or you know, as a war prisoner, he doesn't want to go there and live in the prison. So, he commits suicide. He ran towards the sword, his own sword, which was held by a loyal soldier. And the play ends with a tribute to Brutus by Antony. So, Antony was not at all against Brutus, even though Brutus killed. He was well aware that Brutus, he was an honorable man. He's a worthy man. And he did this, com you know, this, this kind of a foul thing for a cause and he was deceived by Cassius and other conspirators. So Brutus for being a worthy man, for being an honorable man, after his death Antony actually gave him tributes and he proclaimed that Brutus has remained the noblest Roman of them all because he is the only one among the conspirators who acted for the good for Rome. So everybody they are actually taking revenge or they actually acted because of their jealousy towards Julius Caesar. But he is the only one. Brutus is the only one who acted for the good of Rome. Nothing was there in his mind. He was not jealous upon Julius Caesar. He, was, he had no personal grudges towards Julius Caesar. He was not at all unhappy about his success. But he was unhappy and he was suspecting that Julius Caesar one day he may abuse his power and his, you know, no honorability that he or credibility that people are giving them or people are giving to him especially so only to save Rome's sovereignty only Brutus acted in this way and he's only the man he's the only one among the conspirators who acted for the good of Rome that was known to uh, Antony and Antony gave Brutus uh, a suitable tribute after his death and in the end, we can see a friction between Octavius and Antony that we can see in another Roman play, Antony and Cleopatra. So here we can see the play ends uh, with a friction 
we had not a smooth movement going on between Octavius and Caesar's adopted son and Antony. So nothing is good between Octavius and Antony. So that grudge, that uh, friction that we could see in another Roman play by Shakespeare, which is Antony and Cleopatra, that we will also discuss in another uh, video lecture. So yeah. And let's see some of the major themes. Persuasion is a, one of the themes because uh, you know, uh, Brutus need to be persuaded. For that thing, they are actually creating many things, forging letters and creating reasons and all these conspirators. Then leadership. The theme of leadership is also there, defining masculinity. Defining masculinity means if you are masculine, if you are a man, you have to be in this way. So Caesar is often... Um, you know, advised by Brutus and uh, many other things, many other people that if you are masculine, you have to be very brave, you have to, you know, you should not believe in superstitions, you should not hear your words, uh, hear the words of your wife when uh, Kalpurnia obstructed him to go out in that particular day, he can obey that, but there is no demand that he should go to Senate in that particular day, but because he is masculine, because he has to show his masculinity, he uh, really didn't uh, ready to believe her and ready to accept her uh, you know advice and obviously a portrayal of roman history is also there theme of roman history now so these are the major themes and summary and characters of the play uh, julius caesar i hope the storyline was clear if you remember the storyline then it is very easy for you to remember the names as well as the major major events of the uh, uh, the play as well as the major themes as well so i hope that was clear so that's all if you have any doubts queries please mention all that in the comment section and also i'll be glad to read your suggestion and if you have any personal queries about ugc net jrf english language and literature you can whatsapp me call me or message me in this particular number given in the screen and also obviously go and visit my website www.highpoint.in where you will find 900 plus audio lectures 300 plus pdf notes and also downloadable pdf notes right guys and also previous and practice question papers and you know you can obviously see what you get what you have to learn in order to achieve ugc net jrf english and if you have any other doubts if you want any other helps regarding ugc net english then you can obviously mail me call me or reach out to me uh, reach out to me using these platforms if you have not subscribed to my channel do subscribe so thank you bye bye